to her text while I was driving. You know, the bridge, the bridge and Gardner being out was a surprise. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, going back is just don't go that way going back. Or okay. it'll be a big no, actually going back that way you'd be fine. If you go down the side of the river, you'll be able to cross back okay. over. Um, okay. Well, welcome to the LMF board. Um, we have what looks to be a lengthy agenda, but frankly, I think we're gonna be able to get through it fairly uh fairly quickly here this morning. Um just um Remember your per diem forms to those of you that need to fill out per diem forms. Um, and um, other than that, uh, housekeeping, bathrooms down the hall on the left. Let's do a quick round of introductions and start with you, Roger. Roger Burley, public member from Cliff Island. Amanda Beal, I'm the commissioner of the Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry. Judy Camuso, commissioner of Fish and Wildlife. I'm Pat Kelleher, commissioner of the Department of Marine Resources. Laura Graham, director of LMF. Beth. Beth Schiller, public member of Bodenham. Uh, online. Uh, Mac Hunter, public member from Amherst, uh, reporting in from Lubeck on the Ooh, yeah. board. Oh, yeah. All right. Good morning, Catherine Robbins Halstead, public member Searsmont. Great. Thanks, Catherine and Mac. Um, Let's jump right into agenda item number two, which is the minutes of both the May 14 and May 16 minute. I did talk to Laura, they had to do a little bit of cleanup, so apologizing that they came out a little bit late, um, but hopefully you've had an opportunity to take a look at them. Uh, does anybody have any uh, questions, thoughts, concerns, additions, deletions to the minutes? Not seeing any, uh, then we will accept the minutes by consensus. Uh, got agreements all around. Perfect. Let's jump right into then reports from the director on fund balances uh, fun. and project allocations. Yes, yes, sir. And so you can see um, uh, this is the, the the document that shows what's left in our bond. Is still those that twenty two thousand two seventy four above. That is all. Um, earmarks is already is allocated. It's just it's a matter of clearing. It's a matter of getting out the door. So that's basically zero. That that that. Can top. you make that a little bigger for that screen? <clears throat> that would be really great. I uh, don't. That is a no slide that we can do that on the fly in this meeting. Yeah. I'm sorry. It seems like it's usually bigger. So I don't. I don't I'm uh, sorry. I can but, okay. Hide your hide this panel. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you close the a participant window for just now. I don't think. Um, here. Maybe not. Yeah, okay. You can focus on content. No. Okay. No. Yeah. How right. do you do it? Um, if it, it's probably not. Sorry. It, okay. It is Sorry. a page in the board packet. It is a page in the board packet, so you can follow along in paper. If you yeah. have your board. Yeah. There's extra board packets here too. Yeah. It does seem like it's been bigger in the past. I'm I'm sorry. I don't. Maybe the actual physical screens are bigger than over in the year. They are. Uh, maybe that's what it is. Uh, yeah. That's probably it. <laughs> thank you. Sorry. So. Uh, <laughs> so the. Um, the, the really important numbers for us going forward are the, the 27 million down there at the bottom. That's what's left that has not been spent. A bunch of that has been allocated, right? That's just what hasn't been spent. That's what's sitting in that account. Which, which one are you? On the bottom right, bottom 27 right. million, yeah, 22, yeah. 715. That, I can't see it either. The, um, the, um, that is what's not been spent, not dispersed. And then on the bottom left, you'll see the interest that we've earned. That's a big deal. 1.28, mm, maybe it's five, maybe it's nine. I can't see that from here either. Um, that's the interest we've earned on the 27, now 27 million that's sitting in that Land for Maine's Future Trust Fund. Um, and then we have in restricted gifts, we have the same, those haven't changed much, 22,964 in the bottom on unrestricted LMF gifts that has been reduced by about 2000 for various, I'm not sure, quite frankly, what it was. Hi, hi. Um, so that's, that's the state of our finances right here. Any question before you go to the project, you can any questions on this? Slide. Um, so I don't forget, I'm going to direct this uh, question to Commissioner Beal. The 
the last several board meetings, we've talked about the interest earned and the, and the need for potential authorization through the legislature to be able to hold our money in different places. Um, was that something you were going to have on in your legislative agenda? That's right. We were actually, I think we were going, going to try for to have um, one of our staff come to one of these meetings and talk about what yeah. we've been doing some digging into that. So okay. maybe we can just flag that, Laura. Yes. Yeah, perfect. That would be perfect. Talk. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. Moving right along. All right. All right. This is um, looking at it a different way. These are the allocations, what we've allocated to the various programs. And you can see here we have 28 active projects right now in CNR, a little over 13 million allocated to those projects, three in working waterfront. You can see what's allocated, seven in working farmland and two in water access, meaning we have 40 projects altogether and we have allocations of a little over $16 million. This doesn't include the money we've already spent, just to be clear. We, this is just what's allocated. This doesn't include what we dispersed. Do you want to comment on the recent round of working waterfront? Um, oh yeah, there will be uh, there'll be an upcoming round of working waterfront in uh, in that's a September meeting. So um, we expect to have uh, expect probably to allocate uh, some some more of this funding. Yeah, it's not a lot. It's not going to be a lot of applications that we're receiving at that in the upcoming round. How much round. is available in that category? Um, I think that's going to be in the next slide, but it's about one point. I want to say one point nine. I want to say it's about 1.9. So what I think we had roughly eight um, properties that were showing interest in working waterfront, but because we had 25 million uh, for uh, for storm damage, I think a lot of those properties went in that route. Um, and our hold in return, we will have an additional um, flood of money coming in October, November time frame. So I think people are kind of hedging their bets on yeah. using that kind of funding mm -hmm. for some of their repairs instead of coming into the program. Um, but anyway, that is what it is. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. And it makes sense. Then when they come back to us, their wharf will be in a condition that will be worth something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> yes. Okay. Any, any, any questions on this one? Not seeing any. Okay, so here's what you really want to know. I didn't break out separate for all. I didn't do working waterfront and water access and farmland for this meeting, but for, for, for conservation and recreation, um, you can see this is this takes the set aside that 15% off the top, and then we just remove from that, we've got an agency MOU and we move the actual allocations for acquisitions. So that's all, those are those project awards, plus the project expenditures we've already sent out the door and you can see what we have left to spend on projects is 1.69 million. That means we can spend all of that 1.69 on projects. We don't have to factor in set aside. It's come off the top. Yep. Okay. Any questions on the slide? Not seeing any. Okay. The most interesting part. Hey, Jason, why don't you why don't you take a turn talking? I've talked. <laughs> All right, had a very large slate of closed projects this month. Uh, we did did finish kind of big woodlands, um, so that one is done, and we have a number of diff of projects that we hope and or expect will close before we meet again in September. Okay, it's exciting. Just so I was going to say, you must be having more than that day. You have to go. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to go to projects? All right. We thought we thought we'd, we'd haze the new guy and have him go first. <laughs> well, let's introduce the new guy. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's right. So I'm new guy, uh, <laughs> David Hedger. Uh, nice to meet you, folks. Um, so yeah, you guys have before you um, Back River Water Access. This is one of the water access projects we have here in the town of Rousick. Um, approximately 
acres out there on the back river, has 300 feet of tidal inlet on the river out there. It's the first formal boat access on Arousic Island, which for me, I didn't realize Arousic was an island until we had this project. Here. So really pretty spot, really nice out there. Uh, Flora and I checked it out um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, they've made a ton of progress out there already. So AOC recommended uh, approval of the appraisal at $105,000. Dollars. Um, it's worth noting that they originally were thinking about getting um, sixty thousand dollars because they thought their appraisal was going to come in higher, but it came in slightly lower. So there's a draft motion for the committee to, or excuse me, the board to consider. Robert? I move we approve the recommendation of the LMF Appraisal Oversight Committee and accept the appraiser's value of one hundred and five thousand. That is a uh, committee motion, does not need a second. Are there any questions or comments around the motion? Not seeing any. Are there any objections to the motion? Not seeing any objections online or in the room. The motion passes. Excellent. Um, so we did the public notice in the Portland Press and the Cannabis Journal. There were no comments received on that. Um, there's another draft motion for the board to consider. I will note um, online, uh, Josephine and Jack from Arousic are also available. If there's any questions for, that I can't answer that, maybe they might want to contribute. Barbara? I move we confirm the allocation of 52,500 in LMF water access funding <clears throat> to support the acquisition subject to standard conditions. Second. Motion by Barbara, seconded by Roger. Any questions uh, or comments on the motion? Seeing none, is there any opposition to the motion? Seeing no opposition online or in the room, the motion passes. That's great. Congratulations. This is a great project, great, great water access project for that area. So, perfect. Move right along. I'll just note oh, for a second, Jason, um, just for what it's worth, these are recent photos from a couple of weeks ago. They've already demolished all the buildings out there from what you guys saw when you, this was initially approved out there. They, they bought the property. They're moving right along out there. Uh, I think Jack told me yesterday in a message that they're, they're digging the privy right now right, to get it ready. So uh, they're, they're moving right along. You know you've got progress when you're digging the privy. <laughs> all right. Uh, next up is Haulage Farm in Wyndham. This is a uh, dairy farm, a little bit under 200 acres. Uh, also work, leases a lot of adjacent nearby land for hay. Longtime commercial dairy selling to Oakhurst. Um, just for the board's information, this, pro this conservation unit will include an option to purchase at agricultural value, which we've determined we can't apply any of our funding to at this time. Uh, we are working on a resolution to that, but for now we are keeping that option separate from the uh, working farmland funding that we are providing. And the Maine Farmland Trust is, re is requesting an increase from their previous award, uh, for their, from their initial award to, because the appraiser, appraisal came in higher than expected. So they, are asking that their final award be 575,000 rather than 329,000 or 500 uh, so that it, they can continue to purchase it for appraised value and keep the farmer whole. So that will that <clears throat> amount will be reflected in the uh, motion that you're going to that you're about to see. Okay. Before you leave that screen, can you um, is that blue box in the right hand corner or is that the Envelope of the farm and that is, yeah, that is a um, farmstead area building envelope where where structures will be allowed. Yeah, okay, perfect. Thank you. And the orange one is another is another one. This this project <coughs> will allow have of two farmstead areas, and the, the easement will actually allow for the farm to be divided in, into two separate farms in the future if that's okay. you know, what makes sense for the agricultural viability. Okay, and that's all been approved and supported by Bureau of Ag. Okay. All right. So the um, AOC uh, received, met to discuss this on June 7th. The appraised value of the easement was 
1,150,000, which was accepted by the committee. So we have a draft motion there for you. Barbara. I move we approve the recommendation of the LMF Appraisal Oversight Committee and accept the appraiser's value of 1,150,000 for the conservation easement. Great, committee motion is not in second. Is there any um, uh, any questions around the motion or the prop or the AOC's recommendation? Not seeing any, is there any opposition to the motion? Seeing no opposition online or in the room, motion passes. Then the public notice was advertised in the KJ and Press Herald on June 29th. No comments were received. So we have the second draft motion there for you. I move we confirm the allocation of 575,000 in working farmland access and protection funding to support the acquisition subject to standard conditions. Second. Motion by Barbara, seconded by Roger. Any questions uh, on the motion? Seeing no questions. Is there any opposition to the motion? Seeing no opposition either in the room or online, the motion passes. Excellent. Next project up is Silverbrook Preserve in Scarborough. Um, this one should look familiar. It was a round 12 project. This is 130 acres in, uh, it's adjacent to the existing broad turn farm preserve that they have. <coughs> Um, and also connects with land to the south that you can see there in Saco. Uh, creates a fairly large contiguous cons conservation block. They've there's like actually a piece across the road to the southeast that they've acquired that's not shown on this map. Um, we'll offer hiking trails, potentially new England cottontail habitat, and uh, be accessible from Scarborough or in Portland. Um, and just and the, this project, they've agreed to purchase it for 10% more than the appraised value. Uh, any purchase over, temp, over appraised value, of course, needs to be um, approved by the board. The LMF award and calculation of match will be based on the appraised value. The overage is, the, is, just, so it is just the responsibility of the land trust, but we do want board approval of that uh, greater than appraised value purchase. <clears throat> So the AOC on June 7th um, received and accepted an appraised value of 1,450,000. Uh, so we have the first draft motion. I move we approve the recommendation of the LMF Appraisal Oversight Committee and accept the appraiser's value of 1,450,000 for the project parcel. Any motion does not need a second. Any questions or comments? Seeing any, any opposition to the motion? Seeing no opposition online or in the room, motion passes. And the public notice appeared in the Kennebec Journal and Press Herald on June 29th. We received no comments, so we have the second draft motion. Robert. I move we confirm the allocation of 580,000 in conservation and recreation funding to support the acquisition subject to standard conditions. Yeah. Motion by Robert, seconded <coughs> by Roger. Any questions on the motion? Seeing none, any opposition to the motion? Seeing no opposition online or in the room, motion passes. Fantastic. We have to address the 10% over, that we support that? Uh, now, Laura, Laura and I discussed that and came to the conclusion it doesn't need to be reflected in the motion. The board's approval here, have, with that on the record, yep. is accepting that. Okay. Value. So the minute, minutes okay. will reflect that. Yeah, with the board's yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving along, we have a request to modify a a preliminary preliminary allocation to a round 12 project, uh, Porter Hills phase two. Uh, this is a project that a parcel, the blue parcel that's labeled Norton Hill is a parcel that was, I think they had mentioned in the, at the time of their presentation, they were hoping that they would be able to add that, but it wasn't quite ripe back in May. Now it is ripe, so they would like to um, 
modify the approved project to add that parcel uh, that would add 89 acres and they would and they would ask that the allocation be increased from 89,000 to 189,000 and that's all one to one match. Um, you can see there the way that that parcel connects the, the uh, our orange outline parcels are the are Porter Hills phase one so you can see the way it connects there and connects them to the uh, public road to the north and is the blue the additional the blue is the additional yeah the uh, the light yellow to the south is a future target parcel yeah. that was mapped here uh, the red is was the <coughs> initial parcel that was in in this uh, project I'm sorry what did I what is the original parcel from from two red round squares. twelve? The red round, red is the is red. the round twelve parcel. The <coughs> orange is the phase one parcels that have already been yep. funded and completed. Yep. Okay. So you can see the you know, the reason that that is that is an obvious target parcel. Yeah, definitely improvements. Mm -hmm. Great. So we have a draft motion and also uh, folks from Francis Small Heritage Trust here to answer any uh, any further questions. Before we go to the motion, are there any questions of the applicant? Robert? Just, just to refresh my memory, um, this is a part of a larger strategic plan on several levels, isn't it? Both municipals are kind of being statewide. And I was just wondering if you could refresh our memories on what all those plans are, and I see there's some other parcels that are still mm. part of that plan. Sure, I'm Dan Hester from the board. Uh, the, the focus for this to begin with was the Porter Hills focus area that's in the beginning with habitat studies. And we realized that we had only a small footprint, actually 25 acres back in 2021 in this area. So we started exploring what possibilities were available. In the upper left corner of of Jason's map, that was our first acquisition up there, the Porter Heath, which was MNRCP funds that purchased that. Then we came to the LMF with, I'm trying to remember, I think it was almost 600 acres total, 500 and something out of my head, uh, among six parcels. And you don't see all of them. A, there are two more parcels off to the west of that map. But those that are shown in the light green are the parcels that were acquired besides Porter Heath with the LMF funding. Uh, that was largely enabled by a very generous grant of land to matching parcels by a local family, which without that, we would have been drowning in debt. <laughs> but it worked out great, and we're making great progress with those. So it just turned out at the end of 2023, the two parcels outlined in red suddenly came, became available uh, because the owner had gone into foreclosure. That, was, that, that made the opportunity suddenly appear. And you'll also notice there are two rectangular pieces, pieces in the middle of that. That was also the same owner's property, but those are farmland parcels. And another organization, Land in Common, acquired those at the same time that we um, made the acquisition of the red bordered parcels, Moody Road. So then Norton Hill popped up, and just as Jason said, we were hoping it would occur, and it has come. And we have a conservation-oriented uh, buyer who has purchased it to hold it for us until the end of 2025. So we're seeking to acquire that from the holder. So, yeah. So the primary focus was the statewide area of ecological significance, the Porter Hills area. So that's what gave the impetus to the whole project. All of this is within that focus area. And you referenced um, a service center. What? That it's proximate. Oh, the town of Cornish is listed as one of. What the, is it? Cornish. Town Cornish? of Cornish, which is within it must ten be miles like a of tertiary it. service center. It, it, what, whatever it, 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 yeah. it passed okay. the the, the just, it was on the list. I kind of smiled. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> but who who. Uh, I mean, do you have any way of evaluating who comes here? You're, you've talked about a lot of hiking trails and things like that. Is it New Hampshire and Maine? or It's, well, we don't have a detailed study of this. This is just anecdotal. But uh, we do encounter many people coming to hike both to Ball Ledge and to Devil's Den. And in fact, we, we were meeting people and we, 
we had to ask, uh, we haven't finished the trail yet. How did you find out about this? Oh, uh, a friend of ours had been up here and is in Facebook and so forth and it all went around. So we've encountered people from all over the state and out of the state who are coming to these places. And we received an LMF access improvements grant to go ahead and now we've got two new parking areas and new trails under development. It's, it's a popular area. And locally, it's very popular for hunting and for just outdoor recreation. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Barbara, would you like to make a committee motion? I'd be delighted. Um, I move that we approve the addition of the Norton Hill parcel to the Porter Hill Phase 2 project and increase the preliminary award of conservation and recreation funds to 189,000 subject to standard conditions. Second. Okay. Motion by Barbara, seconded by Roger. Is there any additional questions? They have, we had a moment answered. Um, great. Is there any opposition to this motion? Seeing no opposition either online or in the room, the motion passes. Great. You have added the extra part. One clarification, Mr. Chair. So with the addition of the $100,000 for this project, is that is that already calculated in the funds oh, available? No, no, no. So you'd have to okay, lower so that. Take that. That's right. Yeah. That'll be, that'll look different next time. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Um, and we have, <coughs> excuse me, a request by Maine Farmland Trust to amend a, pre a previous LNF project, or completed project, the River Rise Farm Conservation Easement and the project agreement to reconfigure the farmstead area. It's a little bit hard to see on this map, but what they want to do uh, is take the uh, sort of pink outlined area on the south end out of the farmstead area and add the uh, yellow outlet, outlined area to the north to the farmstead area. Uh, they they have the re, had reserved the right to uh, build an additional residence. They think that's a better place for it. Um, the south end is uh, active farm fields, and they would have to drive you know, past all, past the barn, past everything to get there. The north end is not active fields, and. Um, it's more convenient to the to the existing driveway. So uh, it's actually a slight decrease in the size and little or no impact on agricultural soils. This is supported by Bureau of Agriculture. Um, any amendment would obviously needs board approval. And if the board authorizes it, then I would work with council to make sure that do all the due diligence, yeah. title, uh, stewardship, from the no no um, violation of the easement or anything like that, and uh, finalize all the details before it's executed. And they also need to they also need to get um, NRCS as the fed as the federal funder to sign off on this, which means that it'll it'll take some time. So is the motion the draft motion then missing some additional language that we should need? I mean, you've got some due diligence to do here. We would want to make sure that that due diligence has been finalized to to meet the end. I think the, the details of what due diligence is required. I think it's it's all it's all spelled out in our amendment and change of use policy. Yeah. So I don't know if we need to restate all of those requirements in the motion itself. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll just point to the record then after we get through the motion process here that any 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 issues that would come from the due diligence will be brought back to the board. Right. So we'll just look, have the minutes reflect that then. Okay. Uh, so we have a draft motion on the board. Did anybody like to make the motion? I will move that we authorize the amendment of the River Rise Farm Conservation Easement and the project and project agreement. Second. Great. We have a motion by Commissioner Beal, second by Roger. Um, to authorize the amendment of the River Rise Farm Conservation Easement and Project Agreement. Is there any questions, additional questions on this? Seeing none, is there any opposition to this? <clears throat> Seeing no opposition online or in the room, the motion passes. Great. Thank you very much. 
So we have worked through all of the projects. Yes. Uh, and and it's a lightning round, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, I, well, I just, you know, I, I say this a lot after these meetings, but I think because we get the package early, we're able to look at these things, we understand what the, the projects are. It certainly makes the, these meetings go um, uh, a little bit faster than what they normally could. So we appreciate the staff's work on that. Uh, to, keep the board up to speed. So that moves us right along to item number six, yes. which is the public access discussion. And I hope you all had an opportunity to read this. We, I feel like we have come full circle. <laughs> it does feel that way. Uh, on, on this particular issue. I, I was able to spend some time with the memo this morning. Um, I know I personally feel really good about where we've ended up, but I'll turn it over to you, Laura, uh, for, you. for the discussion. Thank you very much. I'm glad to know that's the reaction. Um, well, my reaction. <laughs> exactly. <maybe. laughs> that, when I said the reaction, yeah. of course. So, 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 so <laughs> yeah, I don't, not only do I not expect it to be everybody's reaction, um, I, so as, as you know, the board uh, asked us to take another look at the public access policy as it's, as, as we have evolved, as we are evolving. And we were very happy to be joined in this endeavor with a group of really dedicated stakeholders. Um, and I'm so pleased, personally pleased, to be able to, pr to bring back what is our, our sort of unanimous consensus understanding of how we, how we would love to recommend going forward with the actual policy. But before we get to that, th it was really it was really illuminating to do the deep dive, to look at our history, to see. It was, it was absolutely fascinating. I learned, I learned so much, which is why you pay me, right? How how can we educate this person? But so um, it was absolutely fascinating to watch this and to see how um, how 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 omnipresent and how perennial this will be as you move forward. And and that's good. That's good. And what I also want to say at the outset to frame this is that. None of us, the stakeholder group or staff, want anybody in this room or on this board to interpret anything we wrote as any kind of pressure to change where you strike these balances. What was really, really rewarding was to um, to hear and understand and feel so supported by our stakeholder community as well. Their, what they value in you all is your discretion and your judgment, and nobody wants to mess with that. Uh, we all want to be sure we're looking at the same elephant. And so I'm going to show some slides that show, okay, here's here's the state of affairs. But what you do with that information is absolutely yours. So, I mean, I don't need to tell you that, but I did anyway. So, and next, and that's beautiful. This is the Katahdin. I'm sorry, go back one more time. That's the Katahdin Forest LMF acquisition. These are pictures. And, and yes, I did pick things that looked kind of hard to get to because, you know, that's kind of what we're talking about. Um, but... Lordy, those are beautiful photos. So, um, and that's a, a long ago acquisition. Um, I thought you'd enjoy looking at it. Okay, now next slide. Okay, the statute, uh, the little, uh, the picture on the left, Jason did, the red shows all of the land that is greater than one mile from a public road. So, you know, context, this is the shape of the elephant. And then we have our statute. These are the most fundamental marching orders we have. You see the top part of the statute, 6200. That's why we exist. This is only half of it, and it would have, it was really tempting to like flip it. Uh, to, anyway, this seemed like the most relevant half of it, and so this lays out all the things that are important to us, all the categories that are important to us, and this was an important part of our stakeholders' memo too. This is all that you do, and and the second half is also uh, that public guaranteed public vehicular access rights to the land and whenever possible and appropriate, which I think is where all your discretion comes back in. So you can decide on an individual basis, um, understanding the more, the firmer you are on one, the less you can be on the other. It's, you, you know, you, no one can have it all, but that's your calculation to make in terms of how, um, how, how highly you prioritize guaranteed public vehicular access for any given project will impact what you can protect, obviously, and that is your balance to strike individually and collectively. Um, before I just roll off that, are any reactions, thoughts? 
Not seeing it. Okay. If I sufficiently affirmed your absolute sovereign, <laughs> okay, good. Okay. Next, next slide, please. All right. The policy highlights. Um, oh, and also I should have said that our greatest hope is that we give you enough information to have a conversation, a deep conversation, so it's not about me yakking at you. Uh, so the policy, uh, we, we split it into a real clear two-step, I like dancing, two-step. And uh, the first step is we are saying to the world, this is really what you need to pay attention to. This is how we're going to evaluate. This is, in fact, what we have been doing behind the scenes, or I shouldn't say it that way, and during our title review. This is what we've been doing for a while now, is we've been evaluating projects for um, guaranteed public vehicular access. And so we say in the first part, policy highlights, this policy procedure, the policy highlights, this is the standard. And we even give some uh, examples of what's not the standard to alert people. And we also put point out multiple ways to reach the standard because I personally think it's a reasonable standard. It's always a reasonableness test. Um, it isn't about the category so much. For example, a pedestrian easement might work really well, but probably not if it's 45 miles long and connected to a land, uh, to a road you can't get to. It's not the category that's important. It's the reasonableness test. A pedestrian easement that has some reasonable proximity to guarantee public that via vehicular access is one you're likely to fund. One that doesn't, you're not. So it's not nothing apart from the apart from the uh, public roads is really guaranteed. You're doing a reasonable test all the time. And so, yeah, we, we want to make sure applicants understand what we mean by guaranteed in the vehicular me, uh, world. And that means that is a high standard. That means a lot of things aren't going to meet it. And we want to put them on notice right now. This is the standard because now next slide. And we can come back to because procedures, they're under an obligation to alert you immediately as soon as they know and that should help like emphasizing that obligation on their part should help give you the time and the attention you need to spend to do your evaluation um i thought you would appreciate do not surprise the board um do not do not put us under stress do not come to us at the 11th hour and say you have to choose it or that that would not that's not right and so, and we also in the policy, the revised policy, we wanted to make it clear that none of this policy is meant to confine your deliberations. You get to decide on a case by case basis. You are not, nothing here is directing you how to go about your business. This is all about telling the applicants how to apply and how to deal with this for you. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take a breath, taking a note and see if you guys want to go back to either of these slides or have any thoughts or any, any comments or questions from the board at this point not seeing any i i, I just I, the reasonable standard really i think is the key component here in my mind right we've always kind of looked at that um, and I think back um, in our prep meeting, my prep meeting with Laura for the meeting for this meeting. Some of you were on the board at the time, but we had a very large request from uh, the northwestern side of the state. There's a big sugar bush stand, right? And the only reasonable access was through Canada, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so the board made that call unreasonable to not fund that particular project. Um, that was some time ago, but I think that one, that one always stands out in my mind of how we got to that point. So, yes. okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, next slide. Okay, so now is the time on sprockets. We, <laughs> so now you get to talk, or if you want to, if there's more discussion, we wanted to give you all the space <clears throat> to, these are, these are, it, these are, they're heavy, but they're, yeah. it's wonderful. Um, the only thing I wish here, that's a lot of material that was here um, mm. that you did not just put up here for the, no. from a public standpoint. Um, is there any way, can you flash any of that on the screen? You want the actual um, yeah. uh, actual uh, policy? Yeah. Oh, um, here and online. you know, if you. Um, Hang on just one second. Okay, yeah, I sorry, I no probably pressure. should have. I thought oh, no. I was doing you guys a favor, like, oh, <laughs> to look at my slides. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, and of course we'll post it yeah. online. 
I um, want to make sure that um, what we're voting here on in the, in the public process is transparent, right? So that the, the people online and in the room are aware yes. of what that is if they've not seen the board packet. That's right, Mr. Chairman. Barbara. Maybe, Laura, um, you could highlight for us any changes because in many ways yeah. this is, has been our policy, it is our I'm policy, really it is the way is. we've been conducting business except for a few little tweaks. That's right. Yeah. So That's I right. wonder if you could I, highlight those I for could. us. Yeah, which I think would be you. a fine way to do this. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Um, yes, and I did send you guys a red line, which I my head hurts every time I look at a red line document. Um, and so it is absolutely right. The biggest substantive change over the last policy is that this is firmly grounded in the statute. We talk about the statute. This comes out of the statute. We use the language from the Guaranteed Public Vehicular Statute, and we call it Guaranteed Public Vehicular Access, as awkward as that is, instead of Guaranteed Public Access, to be very specific about what we're talking about. That's that access to a parcel. I learned in my deep dive, Guaranteed Public Access has typically in our past meant the obligation to let people onto your land. And so it's not really a great idea to switch up, you know, or to be too jargony to have. So we set up a situation where someone could say, I need guaranteed public vehicular access. And the person goes, yes, I agree. And they're talking about two different things. So we're trying to be really specific in this memo. What we're talking about is access to the parcel. And since we have a statute, that makes it kind of handy. So that's substantively a difference. Um, the the all the language about the procedurally um, well, so certainly the stuff about, you know, get to the board early. I'm not sure that was necessarily in the other one as clearly. I don't know. So it's we've tried to affirm that. Get to you. crashing on me. So. Oh. Um, and we also made, I think, more explicit the things that do not meet the test. It being an invitee, the stuff we've learned, an invitee, yeah. not going to cut it. Uh, for, uh, an easement for all purposes of way, not going to cut it. So we alert the applicant. We do, I think, uh, we clarify for the applicant community what to expect. Um, but the policy itself, what's been happening behind the scenes, is not different. Yeah. And the other thing I think that's different is the more, the clearer we are about what is in fact happening behind the scenes, then. Um, well, obviously, the better the applicant community understands what's coming, and the better the whole world understands. Oh, and also, the other switch is we had called it a brand new standard condition, and this we're not, right. like, it's, it's part of title review, which is a standard condition, so we're not losing any teeth, right. but it's putting it in context where it kind of belongs, I think, um, as part of our title review. Okay. Um, is that? Yep. But, uh, I'm going to go to Catherine, who's got her hand up. Thank you, um, Commissioner. My question is on what you were just talking about, too, is the draft workbook language, um, the red line on that. Specifically, yeah. um, and I know you can't share it on the screen, but specifically the first bulleted point on the bottom where it says the primary purposes and benefits, on the second line, you have um, and red lined out and I was thinking that and should stay. And on the last bulleted point where it says the applicant agrees to use reasonable best efforts to secure, um, do we have something behind that? What is reasonable best efforts? I mean, is that uh, just a, you know, that right. it doesn't have any language behind it. And I'm just right. wondering if we, if we adopt this now, are we adopting all of this into the workbook or is this still going to stay draft and then we're going to talk about it before the next workbook comes out? Thank you. That, I would say that is my to answer. Oh, yes, please. I would say that is entirely up to you all as a board, whether you adopt it now or you wait and you think we have a pretty good start and we'll talk about it some more. Um, I'm not quite sure which the and was. I know we, we switched up the intro to emphasize the statute. So there's a bunch of stuff that came out of that intro. So I don't really know what the impact of putting the and back in. But if it meant the combining those two things, the you're obligated to, you're supposed to use best efforts. And if you can't, you've got to report to the legislature. Keeping and in makes a ton of sense. Um, and in terms of, but maybe that and referred to something different. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know. It, it referred to something different. So I guess um, I agree that, you know, this is a really good start and I like the direction this is all going in. But I think if we're going to adopt this, the red line, I do think it needs to be on the screen and maybe. Yep. 
take a little bit more in depth, but I think it's all headed in the right direction. And I think, you know, as, as Mr. Commissioner said, um, it's the reasonableness that we want yes. to, obviously we want to do projects in the great North woods. And right. I do think, you know, having access by the North main wood system and, you know, that's that road system to me in my mind qualifies. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, you know, you are absolutely going in the right direction. I'm happy to see it going this way. But I'm Great. a big, as I said many, many times, I'm a big believer in having the public access where we're using tax dollars. Thank exactly. You. I thought of you often when I was drafting this, Catherine. And so um, I was like, uh, and in terms of the other part of your question about is there anything behind um, what reasonable efforts look like, because that test is at the back half when they've already said, that, okay, we can't do it. I think it might be a mistake to try to define that for you. I think that's going to be a thing, a case by case, you will decide on the basis of what's in front of you. The more we try to capture things and categorize them in front, sometimes that's when the board gets confused. Oh, am I confined by this? Do I have to? And we don't really want to set you up for any musts at all. Uh, Thank you, Laura. You free. You're welcome. Okay, Mac, you got your hand up. Oh, you're on mute, Mac. Yes, yeah, some of mine is uh, echoing Catherine, some of it's new. Um, let me try to do this in an organized fashion. Uh, first of all, a lot of emphasis is placed on the, uh, the, the North Main Woods and uh, K.I. Joe Mary areas as exceptions, as Catherine just mentioned. That uh, the map that you provided, which is, is excellent, really helpful, but it should show where those are um, on the map. I think a lot of people have the impression that the North Main Woods covers you know, 90% of what's up there, and that is not remotely true. Uh, those two systems, there's at least the third, maybe approaching a half of the unorganized territories that are not covered by those two systems. So there's a, it's great that we can defer to them in some sense, but uh, it doesn't solve uh, the problem uh, writ, writ large. And, and getting the lines on on that map would, would make that apparent. But Thank that's you. one uh, significant thing. The, the other is um, that uh, this business of a plan for continuing efforts that uh, uh, Catherine just referenced. I also uh, came up uh, that sort of caught me short because there's language here about how in, in much of the unorganized territory, there really is no solution. Um, and there's, but on the other hand, there's language um, in what we expect people to do to, uh, it, it feels like we're asking them to beat their head against the wall <laughs> that, yeah. that we know is un, unbeatable. So some distinction between um, uh, what to do when you know there's nothing to do uh, needs to come come through much better than it than it does currently. Okay. Um, the third and last thing I'll say is that I, in trying to work my way through uh, all these documents, I saw. I mean, I expected the the red line stuff that we we're just looking at on page three to appear verbatim down in the revised uh, Exhibit H, but it doesn't. It gets changed quite a lot going from one to the other. And there are there are places where when I read the, the uh, edited versions carefully, I think mistakes have, have appeared. Uh, there's a place where I think we're quoting from the, from the actual legislation and the uh, and we changed the quote, which is probably not a good idea. Um, so, all to say, um, if I could get a uh, a version of this that I can work with, not a PDF, but an MS Word or whatever, whatever, I'd have some some specific edits that uh, I I would like to to uh, to suggest. And and again, the cap point that Catherine made, maybe before we actually formally vote on this, we'll we'll need to. Uh, work through this a little more line by line than is feasible today. Yeah. And that's all. Sorry for 
taking so much time. <laughs> yeah, and I apologize if the red line version doesn't match up. That's something obviously I did on the back. Um, the red line wasn't something that was created as we went along. It was such a kind of wholesale shift in how we, and so I created the red line with the compare documents, you know, the after the fact red line. And I, we did it multiple times trying to, you know, every time I made an edit, I would go back like, oh yeah, I got to do that again. And so, Obviously, I missed a step because it is absolutely supposed to come out to be perfectly the same. So my apologies, and that is always my intention, is not to slip something by you guys. So I was probably formatting and forgot I was just, I thought I was just formatting, and I probably did something in that moment that I thought was a good idea and forgot to redo my red line. So my apologies, I will absolutely, and, and it seems like a really good idea at this point, where it sounds like we're headed toward, let's not adopt this today, let's get this cleaned up. I, but, I would say, I mean, Mac, Mac's comments, as, as well as Catherine's, have been kind of really to uh, clarify what yeah. we have in this document. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I'm not hearing any objections to the overall uh, approach that the staff has brought to us. Um, I, I would commend our partners in continually bringing the, the, their thoughtful approach to this. I think that's really key, right? The collaboration between staff and our partners. Um, are really what has us here today. So what I would like to do is or suggest is that we get that copy to Mac, we do some of that clarification work that, that he's just pointed out, mm -hmm. um, and then we have a single document mm -hmm. that can be brought, presented to the board at the next meeting, and then we make that motion. And then we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll put a motion on the board to finalize this. Could I, could I ask for some clarification when I don't... From, from Mac in terms of a way forward, because I, I, in terms of what would be reasonable to expect, you know, that banging their head against a wall thing, I would love a sense from the board. The reason I felt not bad about it is because it's in the back half where you guys are all in charge of the reasonableness process. Yeah. Um, so if you want something specific, we want to say to people, I will need some direction. I, I would just warn you and others to, to getting, and you said this earlier, right, where we're going to be overly specific, yeah. that takes away our yeah. kind of flexibility. And, and actually, I was going to comment on oh, that. Thank you. Um, and first of all, Catherine, I think I found the stranded and, oh, but I'm not sure where it goes from there and what the implications are. So, um, I still do that. Uh, but I did. I did want to comment on on this uh, possibility that uh, there might not be any public access ever, forever. But I, I would, I would go back to the only experience that I've had with this during my term on the board, and and we all know that we had this uh, question when Rangeley came to us, yep. Rangeley Heritage Trust, and I remember specifically asking what the options were, and we were told there were no options. You know, that there was a very elderly heir and they yeah. couldn't find this person and the wirehouser wasn't interested. And, and so from their perspective, you know, they would have said there are no options here. But because the board felt so strongly about public access and we asked them to go back to the drawing board and and explore those options that seemed like possibilities to us. They hadn't even had a conversation with Weyerhaeuser at that point. I, I would note the happy outcome. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. not only did they find the air and get a release, yeah. but in doing that, they put themselves in an extremely strong negotiating position with Weyerhaeuser, mm -hmm. and that's going to improve access to many parcels of land. So I think from my perspective, it's important to keep the board's options open. I don't I don't want to sign off and say there are no options until everything is explored. Um, so that would be my comment on that. The other thing is I, I just want to suggest, at least from my perspective, public access is very, very important here. And there are other funding sources for creating nature preserves or, you know, other kinds of uh, properties, which I support, you know, I love all that. LMF really was created, you know, to provide public access for recreational purposes 
to these parcels that we are conserving. And so I, I don't want to lose that as we talk about public access. And I think I want to commend the partners and the staff for um, coming together, retaining our discretion as a board to make those decisions and putting our cooperating entities on notice that they need to tell us up front. They know, you know, they can read a deed. They know if they have public access or not. And we need to know that because we're scoring proposals and there's, a, there's an equity issue here. You know, if we're giving points for something that doesn't exist, it, it could put them in a more favorable position against a, a property that does have public access. So I think that was an important point, I think, is this early notification to us and putting the onus on the cooperating entities to read their deeds and tell us up front, not, oh, we think we could invite you or no, tell us up front, do you have guaranteed public access? So I like that very much. Good job. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, thank you. I think as I'm still clearly new to this discussion and haven't had those clear examples that we've gone through, when I think about public assets, I'm also thinking about that in our last meeting, we approved funding for an island and we're not asking them to have a ferry that's going out to it. And so, you know, what does that public access look like for essentially islands of land and how we can keep ourselves broad enough to be able to have the perspective that we aren't just looking at vehicle access. You know, we talked about bicycles somewhere else. So yeah. you have to be able to get there and you also have to be able to have your, your parking, you know, whatever that means. So I guess that's my saying, in my still learning perspective, keeping our language broad is helpful as we look at the state as a whole. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good point. The the I went back and pulled up the statutes this morning. I just pulled them up again just as I was thinking about it because there is a reference in one of the documents to a portion of the LMS statute, which it's kind of in an odd place, but it's it's the biannual reports to the mm -hmm. legislature. And the biannual report to the legislature is said that, that our, we must rep, uh, report, the report must include descriptions of land uh, and interest in land acquired if acquisition has been made that does not include guaranteed public <coughs> vehicle access to the land, the board must provide justification for that acquisition in a plan for continued efforts to acquire public access to that land. Mm -hmm. Right. So that I think it speaks to that point. Right. It's that we're it's, is a guaranteed vehicle access. What is the vehicle? Right. I mean, it's very broad. That's a very broad piece of language. When here. It's in kind of a funny spot. Yeah. Um, and it took me a bit to find it. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's like because I knew there was something there, and I was like, "Oh, here it is in our report language." Yep. So, but I think that language gives us that flexibility that we need as we think about public access and moving forward with these projects. Roger. A bit of a digression, but I saw Dick Spencer at a social gathering several months ago now, and I said, "How's our friendship doing, Dick?" Well, um, <laughs> he laughed. He said, no, that our, our first pass at that, yeah. you know, just this way, he said, it, it, it really made us do the right thing. Yeah. And we felt even better about the project uh, because of what you guys did. Yeah. And that is just such a confirmation of holding the line. Mm -hmm. Our public access, public access, public access, public access. So. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Mac Hunter, you got your hand up, Mac. Oh, I, I tried to put it down. I, um, <laughs> well, the floor is yours if you've got anything you want to add. So, okay, Barbara. Um, I just wanted to um, say that Beth has raised an important issue, and I, I think, Laura, you might want to address it because I think we've covered that. We're talking about public access to a point where then either by foot or by boat or, or by, by pony, by pony <laughs> exactly. or by bicycle, Tricycle. because I've always been concerned about that. And we're not talking about pub public vehicular access within the property. Mm -hmm. Right. Just right. to get there. Just to get there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Staff has a little homework to do. We do. Um, I, I, 
just clarifying this, but I think for one of the nail, for yeah. want of a doggone red line that's accurate. Yeah. Sorry. Well, it's quite all right. I think the important part is um, we're all, I think, all on the same page. We just need some clarity based up between the red line and the final document. Uh, we'll review that at the next meeting um, and then move okay. on. Very good. Yeah, perfect. Thank okay. you. Oh. All right, um, next item is item number seven, which is the rulemaking update. Oh, yeah, boy. If you thought this yeah, was fun. really good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And you know, so. <laughs> okay, so I put up a brand new timeline because here's here's where we are, and I've learned so much about the rulemaking, well, rulemaking process. Today, if you want, you are going to be authorized to adopt new rules. I know you're excited. And so uh, because I've talked to the AAG, she's good with the proposed changes that we have. They None of them are requiring us to go back out to public comment. We're good to go. But you have, the reason I put this timeline up here, we are not under any time crunch. We have until, the, we can easily do this at our September meeting if there's anything. So we're not under, under the gun. So um, unless you have questions about that slide, we go to the next and to the actual comments we got. Now these were comments, uh, a pub this was the one public comment we got from our friends at TNC and MCHT. It was a really good pickup because we had focused on title and we had, I don't know, we can, I can see what we did. And so I have, we have two options up here for you. If you want to, yeah, today we really should look at the proposed amendments. Um, in red uh, would, would be what our, our, um, our friends over at CNC and MCST suggested, or we could probably do achieve the same result by saying for funding under an ALF program, still adding on the application for amendments, or a third option we haven't thought of that you think of today. I know it's... <laughs> Have you run by the alternative? Have you run the alternative by the two AAG uh, and by the two? Uh, no, this is the first time Jeff is seeing the alternative to their comment, and I don't love putting him on the spot either. Um, so, um, yeah, this is the first time. Uh, I'm fine with the shorter version. Any, back to the, to the board here, is there any thoughts on uh, either of these versions? It, the only reason I might like the second one is, who knows, you know, right. in the future it might save us from going back to rulemaking yeah. to uh, watch change it. Yeah. It's the goal. Yeah. And I want to give Mr. Kelleher credit for <laughs> formulating that. Keep that response all by himself. Do we need a motion now? Yeah, there is a motion after this. I'm sorry. So if you guys are done staring at it, that is, and then you get to decide which option you want to uh, uh, approve. We have to do it. We, so, yeah. Um, so, if somebody would like to make a motion here, I think Commissioner, do you want to make that motion? Sure. I'll move to revise the LMF proposed rule chapter one definitions one applicant according to the second option with the changes illustrated as a red line of the rule posted for public comment. Second option. Second option. Motion. Motion. motion by Commissioner Musso to second that, Roger. Seconded by Roger. Um, any comments or questions about the motion? Seeing any, is there any opposition to the motion? Seeing no opposition or online or in the room, the motion passes. Phew. All right. All right. Next up, uh, staff. And it's next. To, okay, here we go. Uh, this. Uh, so you guys weren't as keen to give us carte blanche as we thought you might be. So, so we realized that gave the wrong impression. And also the AG is comfortable with this as you know, not a substantive thing that requires us to go back. This is our stab at making it making it clear that this is policy you can create if you choose. changes. 
are these the only two changes? This is it. This is it. This is it. Yeah. Um, okay. Would anybody like to make a motion here? Uh, which one do we want? One or two? A draft one. They're, 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 they're the same. They're, oh, okay. So I'll just do one at a time. Um, revised LMF proposed rules, chapter two, rules of the program administration, section 2.03, with changes illustrated as a red line of the rule posted for public comment. Second. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Busso, seconded by Roger. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing no hands. Any opposition to the motion? Seeing no opposition online or in the room, the motion passes. Move on to draft motion number three. Yeah. Okay. I move to approve and adopt LMF proposed rule chapter one definitions in chapter two rules of the program and rules of program administration as revised. Second. Motion by Commissioner Camuso, seconded by Roger. Uh, any comments, questions? Not seeing any, any opposition to the motion. Seeing no opposition either online or in the room, the motion passes. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really? so, well, I still have other stuff to do, I know, but like, um, this is huge. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Great. Next slide, please. Mm. All right. Congratulations to the staff for moving so, you know, Swiftly through this Thank because rule making does take a lot of time and effort. Oh this is like the and worst. So we're we're ahead. We're ahead. We're ahead. And it's like the worst recipe I've ever followed in my life. Where I'm like, wait, oh, and like, oh, I only found out yesterday that oh, I needed AAG approval to even bring this to you for like, oh my word, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you want to hear about some staff updates? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Uh, East Grand Weston, I don't know if you recall, but they were going to relocate an access easement. That's now done. And that is the extent of the staff update. It's done, <laughs> complete, hooray, finally. And then we have our final. Um, yes, we, uh, there's, there was been a loss in the land trust community, uh, Keith, uh -huh. Keith Fletcher, that we just learned about. And I know Jerry. Um, Jeff is good. Jeff is going to speak. Yes. Jeff, would you want to just kind of bring yeah. Sure. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, share some information about Keith Fletcher. Uh, unfortunately, about a week ago, uh, he died after a two or three year battle with cancer. Um, for those of you who don't know Keith, he's been at this for, I don't know, 20 plus years. Um, and he's been a great colleague and, and friend. Um, his, I think it's, you'd be hard pressed to find any properties in your county that have been conserved in the last 20 years that he hasn't played some role in one way or the other. And uh, he's been involved a lot with LMF, the Mount A to the C uh, project years ago, uh, and a number of projects for Mako's Heritage Trust. He's been with us for about 15 years. Uh, and he uh, died too soon. And uh, as a testament to, to the type of person he was, how important this was, this work was to him, he was working on land conservation all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, it's been sad for us at Mancos Heritage Trust, but yeah. um, thank Roger. you for the opportunity to say something. Roger. Yeah, so I did a, several projects with Keith, and um, one that's, I go by every day, Clabbert Island. And um, so from that, um, I learned about his fiddling, and um, I put on a fairly significant event at um, Merrill in Portland, um, fucked the Manuage and Heritage, which uh, was a lot of it was about fiddling, and, and so in our conversation, he said, "Yeah, I'd love to be a part of that," and he came to three or four events surrounding the bigger event and fiddled away, and it was just wonderful. Yeah, and what was really nice about, I mean, he's like a classic land conservation person in that he's sort of behind the scenes, really humble. Oh, he, I mean, he didn't, yeah. He just didn't know what he was doing. He was just did, did so much and uh, sort of a testament to the work that we've been doing. Jeff, thanks for that um, that background on Keith. I mean, I, I remember Keith from board members, from board meetings from a long time ago. And, but 
Agamemnon's, Agamemnon's to the sea project um, certainly has his um, fingerprints all over it. So um, our condolences to uh, MCHT and, um, and the family. So. There's a service form tomorrow at, at, in Wells if yeah. people are interested. Yeah. Um, if, there is, if there is any information you can share with the board, we can, Laura, maybe we can at least send uh, condolences yes. from, from, yeah. from the board and LMF yeah, to the family. Be nice. Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, the last, I think, is just updates on your on some meetings coming up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Here we go. July 23rd, August 27th. Next board meeting is do, September 10th. Do we have any appraisals? We have the one. Third. But the 23rd. Yeah. Darn it. And we could also <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's so exciting. We could also because it's all for the September 10th meeting. Let's, the let's push it. Catherine, why don't oh, we I just see her nodding. do it at the uh, 27th? Okay, Perfect. with you. Perfect. Yep. That's Sounds good. Committee. Thank you. It's a committee. It doesn't need a second. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. Um, I am available on the 10th. I wasn't available. I was going to tell you I wasn't, but I am now available oh. on the 10th. So that's good. 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 Okay. Um, anything else that anybody would like to bring to the attention of the board? Not seeing anything. Uh, we'll adjourn. Uh, motion to adjourn is accepted. I'm not even going to ask for a second. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate everybody's time. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.